Welcome. In today's video, we're taking the first steps towards getting our Jeep ready for summer camping. And that will be installing an external transmission cooler. So, let's get started. The trans cooler I went with is the Hypercool Dual Remote Cooler from Durali Performance. Uh, I like it because it has the dual waterproof and dustproof fans. So, if I drive through a water crossing or mud or even wash it at the car wash, uh, it won't be destroyed. So, I know that these fans will last for as long as I need them to. And it came with the fittings. These two fittings screw into the bottom of the trans cooler and then these are two 3 8 barb fittings that would go right on there. But how I'm mounting the trans cooler, I don't want the rubber hoses to kink going into it. So I bought two of these 90 degree elbows that will screw right into these fittings. And I will have links in the description to the 90 degree fittings and this trans cooler. So the first step I need to do is remove my front header panel so I have access to my old transmission cooler and the transmission line. Now that I have all this exposed, I'll be showing you the new location where I'll be putting the external trans cooler. So this will be the location I will be mounting the trans cooler. It will be on the back side of the cross member between the front unibody rails. Uh, I will have to do some modifying to this lip. I will have to cut this out and weld a piece of flat bar on the bottom to extend it out so I can use these bolt holes on the bottom of the trans cooler. But as you can see, it gives me clearance with the motor still with the back of the fan. And by the spot where I'll be mounting it, I should have clearance with my steering box and the fan shroud. So honestly, I think it is a perfect spot for it. And this is one of the trans lines that will be going to the fitting hole. So this will be out of the way and it gives me clearance everywhere. And how I'll be bolting it in, there will be spacers and everything. So I have a really good airflow with it. And as you can see on the front, there is uh, a hole, you know, the two pill shaped holes. There's that hole and that hole that will uh, be getting some airflow for this trans cooler. So the first step is kind of get it mocked up a little bit. I'll get it marked out with a Sharpie on each edge for the width I need. And then uh, we will get to cutting with the grinder, this bottom 90 degree lip of the cross member and then from there uh, we'll get it cleaned up and keep going All right, so now that we have a majority of the 90 degree bend cut off, I'll hit it with a flap disc to get it as clean and flat as possible. And then from there, once it's cleaned up, I'll get a piece of flat bar cut and cr uh, clamped in place. So then I could tack weld it in place, hit it all with a coat of paint, and, we'll, and we will be at the uh, point of mounting the trans cooler. Well, I'm extremely happy with that. It's about as flat as it's gonna get. It's still pretty warm, but it's as flat as it's gonna get. And uh, it's all cleaned up for the flat bar. 
I'm uh, pretty happy with it. I'm going to get the, uh, the trans cooler stuffed up in here just to make sure the width between these two are correct. If it is, then uh, yeah, we'll get the flat bar measured, cut, cleaned up, and uh, good to go. Well, after mocking up the trans cooler, it fits in there with about an inch clearance on each side. So I'm extremely happy with that. And uh, I have the piece of flat bar now measured out. I'm going to chop it with the uh, the cutting cutting wheel on the grinder, clean up the whole piece with uh, a flap disc. All right, we got that bad boy clamped down. What I'll do is I'll tack weld it right here by the clamp. Then I'll move the clamp itself, get that smashed down tight, get that tacked right there. And then on this far side, get that clamp down also and uh, get that tack welded and we should be good to go. And then from there, the hardest part will be uh, just measuring holes and trying to drill through it so then we can bolt it up in place. All right, we got the piece of flat bar tacked up in there, and by no means are those tack welds pretty whatsoever. But uh, it's nothing that a grinder can fix, but uh, it's in there. I'm, I'm slowly kind of rocking the Jeep back and forth by pulling on that, and uh, it's not moving, so I'm happy with it. Um, after getting the welds grinded down and making it look better, I'll put the trans cooler up in here, so then I can mark out my holes to drill. And uh, the hard part is trying to drill out these top holes. All right, well, these are my first holes. Those didn't really work out. So I'm gonna get some other holes marked up to do the drilling. So there was no way for me to get a drill in here. So I uh, I cut it as far as I can with the grinder. I'm gonna knock out this tab right here. And uh, I have a piece of plate that I will cut and clean up that can easily fit over that hole as a washer. And it kind of makes it a, a, a slotted spot so it should be uh it should be pretty easy to bolt up and i got the trans cooler bolted in place with some three quarter inch spacers and some grade eight bolts and i have plenty plenty clearance between the uh the pulley the fan shroud and my steering box so uh i think this was a perfect spot to mount it so I have it kind of mocked up in there to see that it'll fit. Now that I know it will, I'm going to pull the trans cooler and uh, get it wired up and paint this whole area just to uh, protect the welds and the metal and make it look better. So while the paint's drying, my plan now is to get these fans wired up and to get the fittings installed on the bottom and everything prepped so once the paint's dry, we can bolt in the trans cooler. I'm going to wire up the blue to the blue and the black to the black. And then uh, these fans are reversible. You just have to, you know, touch the blue to the positive or the blue to the negative and then the black to the other to make the fans into puller fans or pusher fans. And I think the uh, if you have the blue wire on the negative and the black wire on the positive, it makes it a puller fan. So I got all the wires connected together with heat shrink and wire loom and taped up and everything. Now the next step is to put on the fittings. I did put Teflon tape on them just to cut down on the chance of leaking, even though these are beveled on the end, so you don't have to put Teflon tape. And then this has an O-ring, but I figured just play it safe and I'll put some Teflon tape on them. I am gonna put them on with the socket but I'm not going to do it extremely tight. I'm just going to get it a little bit more 
than snug on there. But after we get these on, it'll be uh, time to get it bolted in place. Perfect, those are on there tight. So uh, let's check the paint after the paint. If the paint is dry, I'll get this slammed in there. Well, the trans cooler is fully bolted in on all four sides. The only downside is I bought a little bit too long of bolts, so I had to put some extra washers in there, but that shouldn't be a big deal at all. So now that I have the trans cooler fully bolted in, it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna run the wiring up to our aux beam switch panel. Then after that, we will hook up the trans lines. So before I hook up the fans to the aux beam switch panel, I'm gonna actually get the header panel on first. So after that, I'll just do the switches and then the trans lines. But before we get the header panel on, I need to remove this trans cooler. So what I usually do is I'll just take an empty water bottle, I'll set that to the side for a second, and I'll remove a trans line, stick it in the water bottle and wrap it with some tape, and then just let it hang to get as much of the fluid out of the line as possible so it doesn't make a mess. So I'll do that with both lines. Once they're fully drained of fluid, then I'll pull the lines through so they're hanging underneath the vehicle. And then um, from there, we'll put on the header panel. Well, the header panel is on now. So the next step is uh, we will wire up the trans cooler to the aux beam switch panel. Then after that, we'll get it plumbed in. So from everything I've read on the Durali website, these fans take about seven and a, or five to seven and a half amps. So what I'm gonna do is I have a 10 amp slot open on my aux beam kit. So I'm gonna wire it up to that just to play it safe. So I'm gonna wire it up and test it and then see, uh, kind of see from there if it is a polar fan at that point if it's a polar fan then i will just switch the leads around or if it's a pusher fan sorry i will switch the leads around and make it into a polar fan well we got them wired in the right way so they are pulling air through the cooler so we're good to go here we're on to the last step where we're just gonna um plumb it into the trans cooler and we'll be good to go All right, well, we have the lines plumbed into the trans cooler. And I'm extremely happy with it. I only see really one downside with putting this right here. And that's if you have like a, a higher clearance bumper than the Smitty built that I have. You, uh, <clears throat> you could have a clearance issue underneath with the fittings but I mean since how low our smitty belt bumper hangs it actually protects the 90 degree elbows so they won't get hit with bushes or rocks or you know if we're crawling we don't bash it on a rock so I'd say that's the only downside but if you're running the same bumper we have I mean I don't really see a clearance issue and you know a lot of crawling is a uh, tire placement so as long as you have good placement of your tire or tires you shouldn't uh, be smacking any of this into a rock but now that we have it all in there and plumbed i'm going to start the jeep for a second just to get the trans cooler filled up and then we will uh 
see how much fluid we need to add to the system. All right, you guys, so we're going to do a little test. I'm going to leave the Jeep off and turn the fan on so you guys can hear how loud it is while the vehicle is off. And then I will start the vehicle and turn the fan on so you guys will hear it then also. Because I know I will get some questions on uh, how loud is it, you know, will it be annoying, anything like that. So I'll just uh, do this quick test so you guys will know. And the phone is about, or the camera is about, I want to say three and a half feet from the front grill of the Jeep, just to give you guys a reference. So the first test will be vehicle off and turning the fan on. All right, so it is just a little loud while the vehicle is off, but it's not extremely annoying. This test, or this next test will be, uh, I will start the Jeep, and for about the first five seconds after it's started, I won't turn on the fans, just so you guys will hear that. And then I'll turn the fans on to see if there is a major difference. So with the vehicle on, it's not really noticeable at all with the fans on, just because XJs are loud in the first place. But uh, yeah, it's not annoying. It, it's uh, it won't be too loud, and I think this trans cooler will do the job. I will have links below to the trans cooler itself and the 90 degree elbows that I use to make the job easier for you guys if you want to recreate my setup. And uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. Uh, please like the video that helps us out a lot comment down below see if I screwed anything up or you know if it's a good idea or if you guys would do this same idea and I'll see you guys in the next video have a good one bye you guys